Golly, that's good. I haven't found my first plant. <laughs> wow. That's different. I really like that. Peshods or Pichods or Pichaw! <laughs> yeah, now I'm gorgeous. Although probably fuzzier was better. Okay. So this is not what I expected. <laughs> It's Thursday. Hello, hello, hello. It's beautiful bourbon. We got a couple of people watching. Thanks for uh, coming aboard and uh, and checking out this silliness. Um, this has been a pretty good whiskey month, actually. Uh, I had let everything kind of curtail for a while, and I hadn't been buying the whole lot. You know, p pinching my pennies a little bit, getting <laughs> getting ready for Christmas, and still feeding two kids and everything else. But uh, this last couple of weeks, I decided to unpinch the pennies and do and have a little fun. Um, went to a store, uh, as you know, I talked about this a little bit last week, talked to uh, Stephen Beam uh, up in uh, Toledo, and uh, we're going to be trying one of his uh, his products tonight, but I, I wanted to kind of real quickly just go over something that's kind of interesting to me, and, and I went to uh, a Kroger yesterday up in Northwest Ohio, and there's been several people I've talked to over the last week or two and I've talked about these ryes that I love and they're like mm, yeah don't do rye don't do rye I'm like why not <laughs> I mean I get it ryes can be spicy they can seem a little bit hot I get that but there are so many great pours out there that are ryes that you're missing out on and they run the gamut right you've got something like we're going to have tonight which is kind of a little bit all over the place as far as mash bill you've got some like that are 100 percent rye like the alberta premium uh you've got um uh, the low the low rise rittenhouse and uh pikesville and uh, elijah craig and sazerac those are all 51 percent rye mash bill everything else is corn and malted barley and then you've got the ones that are that are being blended and doing some really cool things. So just real quick, I want to throw out a couple of, uh, of ryes that I really like. I mentioned some of them already, Rittenhouse, Pikesville, Elijah Craig, Sazerac. I like the Elijah Craig better than the Sazerac. But uh, I, sh I was talking to somebody about this one, Buzzard's Roost. Uh, we did this one a while back, and man, is this a fantastic pour. Um, this has to do with proprietary uh, barreling. They do something very proprietary with the barrels. Um, and it's source juice. Most is anymore. <laughs> but um, this is fantastic. Another one I really like is the 1776 rye. Now, I like the bourbon, too, but the 1776 rye is just a little bit better. Just a little bit better than the bourbon. And to me. To me. And then another one that I really like is the Mayor Pingree. And now you see I haven't done much with this one because I like it that much. And it's not always very available, so I'm kind of taking my time with this one. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is good stuff. This is good stuff, and, and I would encourage you to do some rye buying. Okay? Now, here we go. This brings images of seven into my mind. Oh, what's in the box? Oh, nothing bad. Just a severed head! <laughs> Minor case. I had to do briefcase for minor case, right? Uh, for those of you just joining us for the first time, um, uh, Beautiful Bourbon started off as just a, a photo experiment. I started taking photos of the drinks that I was having, from whiskey to gin to whatever, uh, vodka and rum and everything. And it just slowly evolved, and I started off with my cell phone, and I, then I got a little bit more, and then I started lighting things cool, and then I started using a better camera, and, and now that's just part of the theme. And then it turned into these bird casts, so it just keeps growing, and we, we, we reached a milestone this week. We're over 400 followers. Ah, Kermit wave! Ah! So, <laughs> so thank you to everybody. All right, Michael's here with us from Coachella, Coachella Valley. Um, other side of the nation from where it's really nasty right now. I'm, you said it was really hot last week, but uh, I want a prayer for uh, the victims of the hurricane down in uh, Florida. And then casualties or whatever, you know, just people lost stuff, right? Their properties and everything else. Uh, Chris Webb. Hey, Chris. Witt, uh, Rittenhouse. That's a good choice. That's a good choice. That's a low. I, it's funny. I had to correct somebody on that one. That is a low rise, 51%. 
and uh, somebody had been telling me that they thought it was a higher percentage, that they thought it was a high rise. Like, ah, uh, no. <laughs> it's the same as a lot of other great rise. You get the chance, uh, Chris, do like I do, uh, did, and put the written house up against the Elijah Craig up against the Sazerac. I think your mind will be blown. All right, so this is the minor case. It's uh, signed by Stephen Beam. Isn't cool? I did try this last week, but I only got a teeny tiny, like, that much. That's it. That's all I got. But that was enough, you know, driving and stuff, and he's got to be responsible, and he can't be responsible for hurting anybody. But now I'm here, and I can have as much as I want. Mwah, mwah, mwah. This is a sherry cask finish, and we're going to talk about that a little bit because it does add something to this two-year rye. Uh, Limestone Branch Distillery um, introduced minor case rye in February of 2017. The whiskey was inspired by Limestone Branch's founders, Steve and Paul Beam, their great-grandfather, whose name was Minor Case Beam. That's his name, Minor Case Beam. I have never heard, I've, I've got, my brother-in-law's last name is Minor, which I guess would mean my sister's last name is Minor, O-R. <laughs> but anyway, I've never heard that as a first name. So, Minor Case, Beam, was the guy's name. Okay, sometimes they called him MC, which I can, I can understand that. I'm KC. I'm your, your lovable bourbon steward. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's see. Third cousin, by the way. The grandfather, Minor Case, was third cousin to Jim Beam. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, he operated this distillery until Prohibition. And then, of course, they got shut down. And after Prohibition lifted, um, Mr. Case Beam passed away. So he never get, really got a chance to get back in business. And that business stayed uh, stagnant. The Beams of that side of the family got out of the business until 2010, when Stephen and Paul Beam decided that they were going to restart it. And they never... Oh, hey, cool. Hey, Joe. Joe is with Mommy Valley Whiskey Society. I met him when we were talking to Mr. Beam, and they invited me into their society, and they welcomed me uh, very warmly. And I am uh, very grateful for that, Joe. So the whole community has been really nice, Chris, you as well. Uh, so thanks for welcoming me in. Um, they are a very active group, so you have, if you are in Northwest Ohio, you might check that out on Facebook, the Miami, or sorry, the Maumee Valley Whiskey Society. Um, they're doing their own barrel of the pumpernickel rye from that Columbus distillery that's all of a sudden, zip, right, right over my head. I can't remember what it's called. Uh, uh, Middle, Middle West? And I, I think that's what it is. Anyhow... Um, they're doing a, a special barrel pick of that, and I've just ordered uh, a bottle from that. So pumpernickel rye sounds delicious. I can't wait to try it. I like it as a bread. <laughs> so maybe I'll like uh, drinking it, too, with a little ham and, and uh, um, never mind. Okay. Uh, let's see. So without a background check. Yeah, you don't need a background check on me. I'm, I'm a good guy. Uh, let's see. Um Limestone Branch is considered a craft distillery, uh, so they they are part. Okay, so Limestone Branch got swallowed up by Luxco. I'm, and I don't mean that badly. They they got acquired by Luxco, and then Luxco was acquired by MGP. They were using MGP juice for the Yellowstone anyway, but now they're using it for the uh, the uh, minor case and. Uh, they have their own distillery, they, and it is a craft distillery where they do their barrels and things like that for their secondary, the sherry cask. The sherry cask they get from Cincinnati. Um, I'll get into that. Meyer, Meyer Winery. Uh, let's see. Uh, the rye was inspired by him and meant to, uh, by Mr. Beam and uh, to pay tribute to the distilling legacy. Uh, this has the same 51% rye component as Beam family recipes dating back all the way to the 1930s. Distilled and aged at MB MGP in Indiana, this two-year straight rye has been aged for additional time by Limestone Branch and Sherry Casks from Myers Winery out of Cincinnati. Told you. Uh, which held their award-winning number 44 cream sherry. According to Steve, 
beam. The finished period is a mix of ages ranging from a very short time to about eight months or so with that same flavor profile can be recreated each year. This is a two year rye. It's aged in the barrels. It's a straight, well, it's not a straight rye. I told you the mash bill, it's a 50, uh, mm, did I tell you the mash bill? No, I didn't. 51% rye, 45% corn, 4% malted barley. It's a low rye uh, in its age for two years. And then it goes into the uh, sherry bottle, sherry barrel, uh, where it takes on new characteristics. Let's give this a spin. All right, this is an ongoing annual release. One of the things that people talk about is it's, it's a pretty bottle. It's got the raised lettering. And in my case, an autograph. Well, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just happy. It's, I, don't, I don't get to meet a lot of distillers, so that was a lot of fun. Uh, cask strength at that. So the pumpernickel rye coming from Middle West is going to be cask strength. I like the idea of that. Tyler, finally have time to watch this live again. Enjoy. Uh, love the enthusiasm as always. Who can't be enthusiastic about drinking? You went with me to the film festival. You know what it's like. <laughs> All right. Uh, a lot of places in the U.S. this is sold for about 50 bucks, but in, in Ohio you can get it for $39.99. Um, now, when I tasted this with Mr. Beam last week, uh, I noted to him, because it's only a two-year, and then eight months in the other barrel, I told him, I said, this does not taste as young as it should as only a two-year rye. Now, I've got some back there that are nine-month ryes. I mean, I've got, I've got, I think, one that's a six-month rye. So, I mean... It is what it is, but this is a two-year, and generally that's going to come out feeling kind of young. And that's when he talked about that sherry barrel, uh, because it is a kind of a, what do I call it, cream sherry cask. It's going to add more zest to it, more flavors. It's going to soften it up. It's going to take off some of the rough edges that a two-year rye would normally have. And again, it's a low rye rye. You're not looking at a lot of spice anyway. But I did go with the Glencairn because it, it, it isn't a huge proofer. This was only 90 proof. And, uh, and I remember that it being so soft, it, I mean, it had a decent nose, but I wanted to really, I wanted to really get that nose uh, centered up, right? Get, the, get it up the snoot and get it in my snoot, so... And I'm glad I did. It's, it's got a little bit of a timid nose. First thing I got off of it was um, just a real quick sense. Uh, I got the, the rye nose. The, the toasted cereal hit me first. Now I'm getting honey. Apple. If you really stick your nose down in there, which with this I really can, uh, that's when the ethanol starts to show up a little bit. Yeah, apple, honey. Uh, cinnamon, just a little bit. All right. Now, stick around. Because we're going to be getting into Sober October next week, and we're going to be doing only low-proof pours through the month of October, Sober October. So I'm not going to stop doing this. Come on. We're at 118 tonight, number 118. Uh, so we're going to keep doing it, but uh, we're going to do low-proof pours, and that's the, Thursday is the only night I'm going to drink through the month of October. And I'm not even crossing my fingers. See? Or toes, because I can't. All right. I mean, I could, but I'm wearing shoes. All right, so right out of the neck pour, the first thing I'll tell you is, it, for a 90-proof rye, it's drinking a little hotter than a 90-proof rye. I mean, not all at once. That bloom comes in. For those of you who are new to the show, the bloom is what I call that burn that starts in the center of your tongue and moves its way out. It's a coffee term. When you pour hot water on coffee grounds, they bloom, they grow, they fatten up, they plump when you cook them. <laughs> So this is kind of the same thing, but different. Um, that bloom can be stationary. It can move back and forth. It can start in the center and go out. It can just sit there like 
you know, your wife after dinner. Um, <laughs> so uh, the bloom is that burn. And it was slow, but it covered everything, and then it lasted for a minute. And it was hotter in time. It kind of grew, which I liked. And then it just, zoom, just took off. The flavor is still there a little bit, but that burn, that, that uh, bloom is, is now dissipated completely. So uh, let's get back to number two. <laughs> okay, an interesting thing on this. One of the things I don't like about Basil Hayden, and that's one we're going to do next month. I've got the Basil Hayden toast. I've never done that on the show. It's a low proof. It's 80 proof. We're going to do that next month. Um, and But stick around. I'm going to show you which one we're doing next week. Um, one of the things I don't like about Basil Hayden is that it saves everything for when you finally swallow it. It's got nothing on the front. There's hardly any flavor. There's no burn, nothing. And then you finally swallow it, and that's when it says, Hi! <laughs> you know, it, it, that's, that's Basil Hayden to me. It doesn't do anything. I don't like tasting bourbons in my throat. I want to taste it in my palate. So this has the flavor up front, but that ethanol burn, that bloom, really kicks in on when you let it go down the tank. You know, when, it, when, it, when you finally swallow it, that's when it goes, oh, by the way, I'm a little hotter than you might expect. And that hits you in the back of the tongue, in the back of the throat. In this case, I really like that because it doesn't leave the flavor behind in order to do it. Right? All right, let's do it again. Aaron says he's no longer my friend. He's told me that several times over the last week. He says, I'm a terrible friend. <laughs> and then says, I can't call you friend because we're going with low proofs in the month of October. So... Uh, you did toast on the show already. Did I do toast on the show? I don't think I did. I did Basil Hayden, but I don't think I did toast. I might have. I'll have to go back and look. You and I had this discussion the other day about the peerless rye. I don't remember ever doing a show on peerless rye. I've done two on the bourbon. The first burb cast and the 100th burb cast. I tasted peerless bourbon again, which is delicious, by the way. Okay. One more, and then uh, we'll add a little water to it. Just an easy drinking rye. Again, there it is. After I swallow it, that's when it goes, hi. <laughs> um, really nice on the palate. It's got a nice silky mouth feel. That's probably because of that cream sherry cask. Again, you would normally not get a silky, creamy mouthfeel on a two-year rye. Not even with a, with a low rye mash bill. Generally isn't going to happen. Um, but this is nice, and it's smooth, and it's silky, and it's tasty, and there's a, you can just, there's a lot of character to it. Um, I, I didn't really give you a flavor profile, did I? It's very similar to the nose. I'll do one more, then I'll just pour some more for the water, okay? Okay. A little bit of pepper on the back end. Definitely some honey, uh, vanilla. Um, it's light on the cinnamon, but it's there. Some of those toasted, some of those toasted uh, cereal flavors are there that you would expect out of a rye. It's got a sweetness to it, thanks to the corn. Um, so it's, it's not spicy at all. It's very, very smooth, very nice pour. Now, I'm curious as to whether we can change its expression by adding a little bit of water to it. Pardon me. All right, so I love this little dropper. This gives me one milliliter of water in it, maybe just a little bit more than that. Eh, right about that, because I didn't put up the whole thing in there. And that's normally a pretty good amount. So there's an experiment that I want to try. And maybe I'll have somebody over to help me with this one of these times. But I want to find a rye that I don't love, that I just like. 
there was a reviewer that I saw online, and he was talking about getting a rye. Let's take it, make it a young spicy rye, right? And choosing different wines that you can add to it, just a tablespoon at a time, and see what it does. And, and you might even let it sit in a mason jar overnight, right? Or for an hour or whatever you want to do. Try it with a sherry that you like. Try it with a cognac that you like. Try it with a, a red, like a Chardonnay, you no. Know. Yeah. Chardonnay? No. Cab. Cab Cabernet. <laughs> Try it with a Cabernet that you like. Those are some, uh, maybe even a Pinot. Now, Pinot is going to be really sweet, potentially, um, and very delicate. It may, may break down in it. But these are some things that you can try in a rye just to see if you like it or not and see what it might be like. A lot of people do infinity bottles, and a lot of people try, you know, re-aging their things in their small barrels or adding, adding a, a spire to it or something like that. Um, but this is just one of the reviewers that I read today talked about doing that, and I think it's a really neat experiment. I'd like to try that. I'm not going to do it with this one because it's already been infused by the sherry cask, um, but, um, but I do want to try that one of these times. Tishner's here. Pick me, pick me. <laughs> That's funny. I, I, think a, I think just a standard rye might do the trick. Um, like one of the guys that I talked to in the store, they didn't like bullet rye. How can you not like bullet rye? Um, Michter's rye. You know, these are standard Knob Creek rye. Standard ryes that all have very similar taste profiles um, that might be good to try adding a little wine to. And I would like to try that. And Tishner, you're perfectly okay to try this at home, too. You can come here and try it. We'll do it together if you want to. And we'll get a group together if you want to. It'll be fun. But you can do it at home and try some. I know you have some wine at home. At least I think you do. Because um, you like cooking with it. So just maybe try some of the things that you have and see what you like. That is if you have some rye. I know that you are restricted on the amount of buying you can do. I, however, am not. <laughs> All right, so we're adding a little bit of water to this. Cognac. Is it a V. Carie? That's interesting. May need to try that. I think so. Basil Hayden Dark Rye has wine actually added to it. Oh, did not know that. Make sure I'm not missing anything. I'm not. I did not know that. Well, they got ahead of us, didn't they, Joe? <laughs> they must have been reading the same reviewer and went, aha! All right, so with a little bit of water on it. Apple comes back out. Um, maybe even a little peach. But it killed it. I mean... There's no body to it anymore. It doesn't seem silky anymore. There's no ethanol bite. It killed it. Um, it brought out a little extra flavor here, just in certain sweet spots, but it killed it. Yeah. Don't put this one on water. Unless you really want to proof it down for somebody that doesn't like any of that bite, but they want to try something good. I mean, one milliliter, <clears throat> excuse me, of water is all it took to kill it. Um... That just means you, I'm sorry, had a good idea, right? <laughs> Need to get a group fire together. I can do that. I can do that. I got a fire pit right out there. Okay, so let's uh, say goodbye to the Glencairn. I am not thinking that this is going to be a good experiment, but we're going to do it anyway. We've got something else we're going to try during this broadcast, too, just so you know. I didn't say anything earlier. But now we're 24 minutes into it, and I need to keep you here. <laughs> so I can reveal what's coming up next week, and so we can try something else. All right. So I made some of my... I'm going to have a company. I'm going to start a company called Gorgeous Ice Sphere. And it's going to be written like that. Sphere. Because this is a gorgeous ice sphere. <laughs> and I poured it before I put the ice sphere in, so... It's my Jean-Luc Picard imitation. Look at that, though. It's just as clear as can be. Isn't that, go Isn't that gorgeous? It's beautiful. I would marry that ice ball. Nah, maybe just a few drinks. <laughs> okay. All right. 
<laughs> I'm in rare form tonight. I hope you are as entertained with me as I am entertained with me. Okay? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um... Oh, I was going to bring down chocolate. One reviewer said this was really good with dark chocolate. And I've got some. And I forgot to bring it downstairs. <laughs> I'll just have to drink more when we're done. Uh-huh. Yeah. Now let's swim this around a little bit this way. If I'm going to drink it on ice, I want it to get nice and cold. We are, we are. Okay, all right. Let's set the date. Oh, now you're going to hold me to it. Let's get outside of Sober October before we set the date. Now, I will tell you, I have already planned to destroy the very first day of Sober October by not being sober on October 1st. <laughs> a friend of mine invited me, Tish, invited me out to uh, uh, a local bourbon bar. Uh, his brother's coming into town, and we've been wanting to go to this bourbon bar, and I haven't been there in over a year now. So it's time to go back. And they have a, a Hall of Fame that if you drink certain drinks that are horrible, uh, <laughs> that you'll be on the Hall of Fame. And I've got to finish that card up, although I'm not going to do it all in one sitting. Um, but so I'm going to spend the first day of Sober October not sober. Oh, I'll start there, and then I'll come home and I'll finish the job. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, okay. Okay. All right. Here we go. Yeah, nope. Wait. Wait, wait a minute. When I first put it on the palate, it was meh. And then suddenly, flavor leapt out. I said, don't forget about me. Let's do that again. When I hold it, Nothing. When I swallow it, that's when all of a sudden, that's tasty. That's sweet. That's honey. Uh, gosh, what else is that? Identify yourself. <laughs> Duh. Graham cracker. And maybe a little butterscotch. It doesn't happen on the palate. It's after you swallow it. Again, some of the power of this one is after it goes down, which generally I don't like. But in this case, it intrigues me. Hmm? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's where the dark chocolate note comes from. That's why they liked it on dark chocolate. I'm tasting some dark chocolate after I swallow it. Only on ice. I didn't get that neat. Definitely didn't get it on water, but I didn't get it neat. Uh, I am getting on ice. When you cool it down, it brings out different notes, slightly different notes. That was a, that was a good experiment. I'm glad I did that. Mm -hmm. I got to watch it with the ice. I went to the dentist yesterday, so everything is just... Oh! Okay. All right, so lastly... Off my finger. All right. Um, so one of the other things that we tried when we were up there at um, the place where we met Stephen, um, bowling and birch. I did a little bit of research on this, trying to figure out where the names bowling and birch came from, and I wasn't able to find anything on a quick search. Um, birch is spelled B-U-R-C-H, so I can only guess that it has something to do with somebody's last name. Stephen, I want to go. No, too cold. <laughs> Drink more like you, when you are done, like you weren't going to already. I know, right? So, um, Stephen Beam from Yellowstone, which is where all this comes from, their company is known for Yellowstone. Now you know it from Minor Case and for Bowling and Birch. Bowling and Birch is their gin. Stephen Beam does not like juniper in gin. Just like a lot of other people, they turn it down and they go, no, I don't like gin. It tastes like pine trees. It's chewing on a pine cone. I don't like it. It's so piney. I happen to like the juniper in gin. So, I mean, if, it's, if there's no juniper, it's not gin. So, so kind of like if there's no corn, it's not bourbon, right? So uh, this is another one of their products. And I did try it up there. 
And the reason I want to I, I want to do it here with you guys and gals is that is a neat lid, and I have to completely destroy this poor label to get to it. Unfortunately, um, this is one of those like vacuum seal lids. That is so nice. That is so cool. I like that. Okay, let me get back to the story. Stephen Beam is a gardener. He likes flowers. It's one of his things to do, right? He's, uh, he, I think he even has like a background, like training in horticulture. Um, and, but, and he wanted to make a gin, but he doesn't like juniper. So he started playing around and they use some of the flowers and, and the, the different, um, uh, what's the word anyway, uh, expressions that they have, uh, on their own property. There are 19 different ingredients to this gin, 19. Um, not all gins have that many. Some will have seven, eight, 12, 19 different botanicals. That's the word I was looking for, botanicals in this gin. Uh, so uh, I did try this on site and I'm gonna do it again, but I wanna do it two different ways. Um, I am one of those guys that, that likes my gin cold. I tried it with Steven, neat, no ice, just a tiny little taste, and I did really like it. But I want to give myself a little bit bigger taste. Palenti. And then I'm going to put it on ice and see what it does, because generally I like my gin cold, and I'm wondering what it will do. So we're going to try, uh, try it first, just as it is. Um, this is the Bowling and Branch Gin. It's another product out of the limestone... Uh, branch Distillery, located in Kentucky. All right. Yeah, very floral. The juniper is in there. If you're a gin fan like I am and you like the juniper, it's there. It's just balanced with the other 18 botanicals that are in this. Um, very tasty, very smooth. Um, some gins aren't so smooth. Um, beef eater and, you know, some of those, they're deliberately made to be mixing gins, right? Um, this one is very, very smooth. N almost no bite whatsoever. The proof on this is... Gotta be on here somewhere. There it is. It says it's 96 proof. Nuh-uh. 96 proof. You could have fooled me. That is so nice. That is so smooth. I mean, it drinks even smoother than Bombay Sapphire, which is my, my juju. That's my go-go juice. That's my yum-yum juice. Bombay Sapphire is my favorite gin. This is fantastic, and it's so smooth. Does not drink like it's that high. Not in the least. Little burn on the back. Yeah. Delicious stuff. Um, they do have this around the state. So if you're a gin drinker, I would say pick some of this up. Now, I do have some ice cubes. You like my cooler? <laughs> it's deer season. You got to have camo. Now you can't see me. <laughs> I'm enjoying myself. I'm enjoying myself. Okay? That's... And that's half the battle. Went to a meeting last night. They were doing different things, and they were saying, you know, trying to ascertain what your purpose is and what you're passionate about. And all I could think about was drinking. <laughs> I couldn't say that in, in the company I was with. I couldn't say, I'm passionate about my bourbon. I couldn't do that. <laughs> so I just sat there and went, I, 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 uh, you're not passionate about anything? Uh, uh, meat. <laughs> Somebody's talking. Somebody's talking. Good ex standard expression of a bourbon. Herbs. No, botanicals. Botanicals is what I was trying to say. Uh, blade and bow. Uh, blade and bow, uh, you know, it's great neat. Blade and bow is great neat. Um, and it's okay on water, but you put ice on it, it falls apart. It's like 
It's like the walls of Jericho coming down. There's a little biblical reference for you. Um, um, have a feeling it will fall apart on ice or water. Uh, yeah, so Blade and Bow is a good one. And I've collected all five keys, thanks to some help from friends. Thanks, Tish. Um, but uh, I haven't done anything with them yet, just like I haven't done anything with my Blanton's uh, toppers. Because you got to open the bottle to send the toppers in, right? And after all the work it takes to find eight different bottles of Blanton's, who the hell wants to open them, right? That's a problem. Anyway, Tyler says, I just watched your intro on your YouTube channel. Your voiceover on that is clean. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> No, it's nice. I was using that for a while, and I got told, don't use that. It's too, it's too clean. Like, there are some people who prefer the videos that they watch to be not professional. And I can't help myself. I own a video production company. I'm going to be professional. All right. Uh, sometimes. <laughs> All right. So here we go. Okay, I think this is one of those rare cases where instead of ice cubes on gin, I would use the ice sphere. It's going to melt a lot slower, therefore diluting the gin a lot slower. Um, this, for a 96 proof gin, has no bite. It is smooth. You put it on ice and it cools it down. The flavors are still there. Don't get me wrong. It still tastes delicious, but there's just no body to it once it's been watered down a little bit. So using an ice sphere, which has a lot less contact or uh, uh, surface area, contacting the, uh, the gin as ice cubes do, I think I would do that. When you have a, a gin that has more bite to it, like Bombay Sapphire or uh, the Botanist or uh, whatever one that Ryan Reynolds has, the, the Aviator, you know, they have just a little bit of bite to it, right? And... They may be lower proof, higher proof, I don't know, but you put them on ice and they they hold up to the ice because they still have some of that bite. This is so stinking smooth that the bite just disappears completely. Not that there was much to begin with on ice if, if you let it sit too long. So, that being said, it's delicious on ice. I like it. I like it cold. Uh, I liked it neat. I do like it cold. So, all right. So, next week, we begin Sober October. I know. I know. But we're going to begin Sober October, and we're going to do burb casts that are low proof. Uh, Basil Hayden will be in there. Maybe. Aaron seems to think I've already done toast. I don't think I have. I can quickly find out whether or not that bottle's been opened. And then I will know. But I'm not going to leave you to go do that. So what we are going to do next week. It's one of those bottles that when you first start seeking out bottles. Now I'm not going to. Oh, there it goes. Okay. When you start seeking out bottles for the first time. It's in a lot of cases other than Blanton's with the horsey on top. If you're searching out a bottle for the very first time and you're standing in line and you're looking for it and looking for it and looking for it, it might be this one. Crown Royal Peach. Just recently, this has been more available everywhere. So some of the mystique is wearing off. It's still Crown Royal Peach, but it's easier to find now than it has been in many years. Turns out that because the demand for peach was so high... They stopped production of the salted caramel, the Crown Royal salted caramel. So they would have enough distillate to create Crown Royal peach. So those of you who enjoy the salted caramel, sorry, the peach guys won. They beat you. I hope you have some left. We're going to do Crown Royal peach next Thursday right here on Beautiful Bourbon. Um, you can find us on Instagram at Beautiful Bourbon. You can find us on YouTube at Beautiful Bourbon. We're slowly starting to get these burb casts that are, that are filmed with you talking to us. We're getting those up to YouTube, and um, 
We're getting comments, we're getting subscribers. It's been kind of fun. And I'm a little behind on it, so I need to get back to it, get some of those up there. Um, and then, of course, here on, on Beautiful Bourbon. And I want to thank the Maumee Valley uh, Whiskey Society and Northwest Ohio Bourbon Enthusiasts, and, of course, all of you. Uh, for coming along. The Bourbon Steward Group. I am a bourbon steward, so that got me in a very special group. Central Ohio uh, Bourbon Enthusiasts, thank you for uh, helping me promote this uh, Burbcast. We're up to over 400 uh, watchers, and uh, it's been a lot of fun, and uh, we're going to keep going. Uh, I've got no reason to stop now. i got a basement full of booze, and I'm not going to open it without you with me. So we will see you next week for Crown Peach. <laughs> And I'm going to see if I can come up with something interesting to do with it, because it's crown peach. What's it supposed to taste like? Peach? What are you going to put in it? Why? It's like... What is it, 70 proof? Yeah! <laughs> 70 proof! So... But I'm going to taste it next week with all of you. So if you have crown peach, great. Open it up and have a swig with me. If you don't have it, it's really like everywhere right now. You will not have a trouble, any trouble finding Crown Peach. So go find it and drink with me next week. All right. Tea. Iced tea. Okay. All right. Nice. Liked it. Liked the story and history along with it. Thank you, Joe. I appreciate that. Sad they don't make the bourbon mash anymore. Yeah, they got in a lot of trouble over that one, Tyler. Oh, YouTube, it definitely works. Cool. Cool. Just got key number five. Awesome, Joe. Good for you for the uh, Blade and Bow. You know, when I first did Blade and Bow, I was thinking, you know, Blade and Bow. No, Blade and Bow are pieces of a key. Brr. Our schools fail us. We should know what a key is made up of. A blade and a bow. We should know. School. Eh. Okay, good to go. Good to go. Two bottles of peach. All right. Well, then you can be here next week with us, Tyler. Bring all your friends. Have them sit around and watch me drink. Crown Peach <laughs> as part of Sober October, which is a stupid-ass month, but that's okay. It's all right. All right, so thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank uh, you. Thanks for hanging around. Um, we will see you next week, uh, and uh, drink responsibly, please. And if you get the chance, do check out the Maumee Valley Whiskey Society and get into that Middle West Spirits Pumpernickel Rye that they're doing. They're selling those bottles for like 70 some dollars a piece, uh, but it is a special barrel pick from this group. You're not going to see this anywhere else. Uh, so if you like their pumpkin nickel rye, you might, you're going to like this. It's barrel proof. It's a single barrel. You're going to love it. So, so get into that and check that out. And uh, Joe, again, thank you for the, uh, for the very nice welcome. I appreciate it. In the meantime, we will see you next week with that guy. Ah. <laughs>